I get to talk about because it's, it's my panel, my people. This film, this award-winning film, is being shown tomorrow at 3.45 in the afternoon. The woman who made it is here, as is the co-founder and president of the Performing Animal Welfare Society. You guys come up. So this is the, the wildlife conservation thing. Which, look, we got seven sample panels from 37 influencer groups. You folks and thousands of other people are going to vote on your preferences of who amongst these named people you think are, in fact, the most influential. I think these two people are pretty cool in the zone. So Kamala Fox just finished and just showed for the first time Killing Games, which is about coyote killing contests. What I can say about that, these folks are about to talk about at some greater length, is community standards change. 150 years ago, it was considered acceptable to own a black American in certain parts of this country. 200 years ago, 200 years ago exactly, it was legal to own a black person anywhere in this country. Women were considered property. Children were considered property. And we still consider animals things. They have the rights of a table. Discourse. <clears throat> Okay, okay. Well, I can see, I've been doing this a long time, as you can see by my hair. We've, uh, we've been at this for f over 40 years. We've been trying to change the attitudes of uh, the public, and I think we've landed in the right place. I think uh, this room is full of uh, people that are forward-thinking. Some of the panels today have been inspiring. I think we're in the right track. I think animal rights people used to be the fringe, the radical fringe. They used to call me uh, an animal extremist, but now they call me mainstream because people think that animals should have rights. I deal, <clears throat> I deal on a daily basis with wild animals at our sanctuary, including elephants and tigers, bears, leopards um, and it's a sad situation we don't we don't look for animals they come to us we took a bull elephant the biggest most incredible animal on earth 10 feet 6 inches tall he's taller than a basketball hoop he weighs 12,000 pounds and he was living in a space smaller than this stage for nine years he was in a circus and the circus was going defunct, thank God. Most circuses are going defunct. When we started, Ringling Brothers Circus was thriving. We were beating our heads against the wall, trying to get the word out about the abuse of animals in entertainment and especially circuses. Uh, we were getting nowhere. There was ABC, CBS, NBC, UPI, and AP back in the 80s when we started. Now, you people can get the word out. The last panel uh, showed us how to get the word out. And I think ch things are going to change soon. I think it's archaic that we still have animals locked up in the L.A. Zoo. There's a bull elephant there that they built a $42 million enclosure that they call state-of-the-art. There is no state-of-the-art locking up a wild animal. And we have been fighting this for years. There's no conservation. None of these animals are going to be returned to the wild. The whole idea is saving habitat. They came up with the term endangered species in the 1960s. It should have been endangered habitat and then we'd be shooting at the right target. We're spending money that we shouldn't be spending keeping animals caged. If you want to teach your children about human behavior, you don't take them to jail to show them people in jail that have no choice but to be locked up. And that's what we do. I think captivity teaches, captivity teaches disrespect right off the bat. As soon as there's a fence, you lose all respect for the animal. And I think uh, in the next five or ten years, 
we're going to look back and think, I can't believe that we used to keep wild animals locked up in cages. They live and die. They're not returned to the wild. The LA Zoo is never going to return an elephant, a bear, a tiger, a lion, a baboon, a gorilla, orangutan to the wild. No zoo in the world is ever going to do that. We have to, it's an urgent situation. We have to change everybody's um, behavior. Supporting captivity is definitely on the wrong side of history. And I think we have to stop right now. We have to save hab habitat. If we don't save habitat, then we're going to lose the animals. But don't put them in a cage and tell somebody that you saved the elephants. Thank you, Ed. So Ed's talking a lot about the animals that we put and we are incarcerate. And I run an organization called Project Coyote. I founded the organization 10 years ago. We are based up in uh, Marin County. We're national, and our mission is to promote coexistence between people and wildlife through education, science, and advocacy. And our focus is on the most persecuted, maligned, misunderstood predators of North America. That includes wolves, mountain lions, bears, coyotes, bobcats, the ones who have no protections by our state wildlife agencies, who are often killed in horrible killing contests. And on the back of your program, and I just arrived from San Francisco today, I was, um, I was, uh, most um, just bamboozled to see on the back of the program that our, our film is on the back of the program. So it's being shown tomorrow. <laughs> and I thank um, uh, Marty and Victor for making that happen and bringing attention to these issues and really inviting me and Ed um, up here. So our film focuses on these horrible wildlife killing contests. Um, th these take place in every state in the nation except for, and I want everyone, about six hours ago in Vermont, um, they passed the first law banning coyote killing contests in the country. They passed the first law, and then our Fish and Game Commission in 2014 became the first state to pass a rule that banned wildlife killing contests in the, in the country. So we have a trend, and uh, the reality is that the rest of the nation allows this. And so this, what these are is that hunters, so-called hunters, but they're really not hunters. They are people who like to go out and kill animals for prizes and fun. And basically the person who kills the most or the largest of a given species that's targeted wins a prize. That prize might be a rifle, uh, some kind of trophy, cash, and they they win an award for this, and, and young kids are encouraged to uh, participate, as young as 10 years old in some states. So we are trying to ban this practice across the country. We formed a national coalition, a national coalition to end wildlife killing contests. We have 20 state and national organizations that are part of that. Uh, we're growing, both con conservation and animal protection groups that are part of it. And it is part of a national movement that is trying to reform the way that we mistreat our predators. Many of you have probably heard of Cecil the lion, the famous uh, lion that was killed in Zimbabwe for $50,000 as a trophy by a dentist who flew over from Minnesota to kill this lion. What we're saying is that our mountain lions and our bobcats and our wolves are similarly being trophy hunted and trapped and poisoned in our country. Most people have no idea, and so Project Coyote is trying to shift this paradigm. We believe that multimedia and documentary films are vital to that. I'm learning, yes, yes. I'm learning tonight um, about various things that you all do that are new terms to me that I'm realizing, wow, that could help change, change the paradigm, help us get the message out. I mean, new ways. What we are up against is misinformation and a lack of awareness, and we need avenues and ways to get that message out. So I, again, want to reiterate my thanks to Marty, who brought me here and said, this is a platform for you guys to get your message out because we can synergize and work together to help get this out. So thank you again. Well, I, I think that... Uh 
I think you're exactly right. Uh, documentaries and the more information we can get out, real education about these animals is, is the most important thing we can do. Uh, it's up to other people to figure out how to do it. I'm most of the time more you know, closely related to a John Deere tractor than a computer, but, but uh, we have to get the word out. Uh, An Apology to Elephants, a documentary that was uh, made by uh, Lily Tomlin uh, that won an Emmy and her partner Jane Wagner wrote it, uh, pretty much put, was the end of Ringling Brothers after she, uh, she played that video in, on HBO. Uh, Blackfish obviously uh, put a huge dent in, this, in not only SeaWorld but the whole marine mammal industry. And it wasn't that, that it was aimed at that, it, it just leveled the playing field. It just put out the information about what orca have to go through in captivity. Uh, I've been with wild animals in, in captivity, unfortunately, for a long time. I see it daily. We don't breed any animals. We don't, we don't promote captivity. We're probably the only anti-captivity sanctuary in the world. Um, it would be much easier for us to raise money by saying, please help us feed Nicholas the elephant who was locked up in a small enclosure. But if that's all we did, none of us would do it. We have to fight for the rest of the elephants. We have to fight for the wild elephants. We have 7.3 billion people on earth and we shoot elephants because there are too many. I, I just don't understand the trophy hunting and... Uh, and the rationale that we have. It took us 300,000 years to get our first billion people on Earth, and the fifth and sixth billion people came within 12 years. Obviously, there's another problem out there, and I don't think it's the elephants, I don't think it's the coyotes. <laughs> Thank you. So, <clears throat> Los Angeles, we gotta get that elephant out of the LA Zoo. David Ryu, will listen to us. The voices in this room can shift his vote, and his vote will flip the city council, and that little elephant will go to Arc 2000, which is his place. I urge you all to make a pilgrimage to Andreas and see what they're doing and walk in that placid place with those formerly harmed animals who are now in an earthly paradise. Thank you both for your good work. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for you, your Marty, attention. Thank you. thank you for influence.